Hello, hello, and thank you guys for uh, tuning in for another Thursday night live stream. Got, uh, let's see, 17 and the 18 in the chat now. Some more people coming in here. This is great. Um, seeing some familiar faces. Let me know that you can hear me all right. If I need to turn my mic up, that's super easy. Just give me a little nudge here. Um, I've had a lot of people help me out recently. My mic has been low recently, so I'm trying to avoid that. I'm doing... Um, the automatic feature here on the mic volume to make sure or to see if it works better, I guess. So let me know if that is okay. Uh, thanks, Uta. I saw you said that's really cool. Yeah, that intro, a uh, little over the top. I've, I've kept it, honestly, because I'm too lazy to change it right now. I might end up changing that soon. <laughs> All right, so I got to say hey to a few of you in the chat. Um, give me just a second here. I actually don't have anything poured to kick off with, and I want to get my palate acclimated. Let me grab something. Uh, nice and quick here. Let's see. Let's do something different. I'm going to start with this Redwood American Batch 2 that I kind of happened into at a really cheap cost, like 25 bucks or something. So let me start with that before we get into all the craziness, before I say hello to everybody. Yeah, just something a little bit different here. I usually start with like a Buffalo Trace product, like, like Buffalo Trace or Eagle Rare to kind of get a little sweetness. You know, something nice and easy to sip on, but we'll go with some Redwood American Batch 2 right now. JG says, up the mic a little. There we go. So it's up It's up just a little bit there. Make sure, uh, hopefully that works. Okay, so let me say hello to some of you in the chat today, um, or this evening, rather. We got JG in the house. Cheers to you, first comment. Um, Carl is hanging out with Uta. Thank you guys for tuning in yet again. Tom, cheers to you. Aiden is here this time. That is awesome. Good. Yeah, you've been at work. You've been working a lot, it seems like, during a lot of the streams that I've been on um, or hanging out in. Uh, let's see. Howdy, stranger. Got class music. Lito is in the house. What's up, Lito? Good to see you. Uh, Christopher David, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Um, let's see. Holy grail, that is some music. Intro. That's hilarious. Yeah, I might end up cutting the dubstep and the dramatic part of the intro off and just leaving the jazz tune. That might be a little more reserved. <laughs> um, DC, what is up? Good to see you as well. Redwood are really good blenders, uh, excellent with cigars. I could only imagine that it would probably be pretty good with cigars. Let me get a sip here. Yeah. Those American batches are definitely a little bit different than the, the Lost Monarch, which I love so much. This one has a little bit more fruit, even if even if it does taste a little young, good amount of fruit in there. So, all right, good to see all of you. Let's see what do we have here. I, I made a little agenda today just to make sure I say a few things. Um, okay, so some things that are coming up, blah blah blah. Let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, so last week, if you were here, I started off my Booker's bracket. And I have nine samples of bookers that have been sent in. So I know you probably can't see this. That's okay. This is just for me, really. Um, and we completed this side of the bracket over here. And today, we're going to complete the other side, figure out what the best pour is, and then put those head to head. But because I have a ninth bookers uh, sample here, whatever wins is going to go up against the wild card in the final round. So Sarah organized all of this for me. I think she did it completely randomly. Um, not even relative to dates or anything like that, because we have batches going back to 2015. So that's going to be the first part of the live stream. Then I'm going to do two of my blind pours and my Black Glen Karens from Sarah, as I always do. I'm cutting it down to two because, because I have a couple of new bottles that we're going to pop on the live stream, and I'm going to test out uh, for the first time here. So they're still sealed. They arrived via UPS today, so many days late. It's taken a month for these to get here from Sealbox. But I have the brand new Chattanooga um, apricot brandy finish from the experimental side of the distillery. And then I have the Pursuit United. So I, I went ahead and put my googly eyes on them. But uh, I 
I'm, I might have to move them up once the seals are off, and then I can move them where the plastic is right now. So, to match those googly eyes, I thought I would bust these out again here for just a second, um, which were introduced last week with Sarah. So, anyways, yeah, we're doing Booker's Blind Flight. We're going to wrap it all up today. I thought I was going to do a third week, but we're going to wrap it today. We're going to do um, Sarah's Two Blind Pours, and then we're going to pop these bottles, check them out. And that's going to be that. So... Get my little eyes swinging around here. Um, I actually can't see the screen when I wear those. So let's see what we have in here. Oh, Richie Z's in the house. What's up, Richie Z? Ujal, good to see you, man. I need to get back to you. I'm so sorry. I have been practicing for like eight hours today, um, just trying to download notes into my brain. Uh, so Richie, Uta, Tom, Jaywa, looking forward to see what you think of the Pursuit United. Me too. I'm, I'm very curious about this. I'm a little more excited for the apricot brandy finished uh, Chattanooga, but who knows? We'll see. Um, Long Road Home Whiskey, what's up? Good to see you. Completely fine, no words at all, and won't be in the chat for a bit. Just here folding laundry. I feel it. I know. I do. I do mindless tasks when I'm on whiskey tube as well. So, all right, let's put these. We'll go ahead and put these up here. Little summertime sunglasses on the top of the head. <laughs> Lone Wanderer 360 in the house. Just got home from the coast working. Glad you're home. Um, whatever part of the country you're in, it's getting crazy down south. So for all of you out there, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're safe, safe and sound and, you know, all that good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. And we can talk about some other things along the way. I'm going to try to drink more water tonight. So please remind me to drink, drink some freaking water. If you see me not taking a sip every five minutes, just, just let me know. <laughs> uh, Lido says, uh, need to follow along with some Booker's Kentucky Chew. I don't think I have that one in here. Carl says, any task can be mindless if you're apathetic enough. Oh, believe me, I've got a good bit of apathy going these days. <laughs> Random compliment. The typewriter piece from your COVID miniatures was very circus light. DC, thanks for checking that out. I actually haven't been over really checking on my other YouTube channel at all, uh, just because I've been so inactive musically, but I appreciate you checking that out. And that recording might go into a video. I'm thinking of doing a series called More Drums Than Drams and kind of highlighting what I do, little 10-minute segments of kind of talking about things, showing a few clips. Uh, so I'm thinking about doing that soon, and that's definitely a piece that's going to go in there. Nick Combs says, did you find an A121? I did. Um, it's back here, and I'm going to be reviewing this tomorrow and trying to crank the video out Saturday at the latest. Haven't put a video up in about a week right now. Um, things have just been really busy. Practice schedule has been kind of crazy. So yeah, I've given this a try here. This was sent in by a very, very generous supporter of the channel who I will not mention by name so that that person does not get hounded for, for these. Um, but yeah, it's fine. It's a fine batch. It's not as bad as Larceny's new batch by any means. That one is atrocious for me. But uh, yeah, the A121 from Elijah Craig, it's, it's decent right now. I'm trying to get past the shoulder by tomorrow so I can see what happens over the, the next few days. But want want to get that review out very soon. Beautiful Stag Batch 12. I love it. Oh, yes. You should pop the 15 and do a side-by-side -side because the 15, after a couple of days, maybe a week or two, it gets even sweeter and even better. And to me, it's as good as Batch 12. But at first... On the cork pop, I didn't like it so much. Felt a little bit uh, constricted there. Trev in the house. What's up, man? Uh, Mr. Mr. Delayed Flight. <laughs> what's up? Um, Trev and I are going to be moving our blind flight from tomorrow we were planning on. It's going to be next Wednesday before Jason's stream, Mash and Drum. So that is the plan. Whew. All right. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and get started here. Let me check my bracket. The first two pours that are up against each other here are going to be uh, going to bees. I'm not even. I haven't even had anything to drink. Let's do number four versus number seven. All right. So that is what we have last week. Number nine was the winner. And at the end of tonight, I'm going to reveal what all of these were. So let's throw this graphic up right now. Boom. All right. So you can see the batches over there that we are working with. And, you know, I've already tasted four of them, and we're going to do the other five tonight and figure out this winner. So let's start here with glass number four. I'm going to hold up this card so you can see which batch I am checking out here. All right? If you need me to hold it up again, please just let me know. No, no problem. All right. Batch four. Or sample four. 
not much on the nose, surprisingly. Oh, that's interesting. It's, um, I can get a little bit of alcohol in the nose, but the flavors aren't really jumping out of the glass for whatever reason. Oh, wow, 31 in the chat. Hey, what's up, everybody? A lot of people just jumping in here. Um, if it's your first time, welcome, welcome. Please like the video. And if you like tonight's live stream, subscribe to the channel. I uh, hope you enjoy some things. New videos coming out soon. But yeah, 21 likes, 31 in here. Please like that video. Let's get some more people in here hanging out on this Thursday night. All right, um, so I'm just getting like some faint caramels. For a Booker's, this is a really strange nose, and I'm kind of confused by it. So I'm going to take a sip first and then go back to the nose. I think I just need to get this in my uh, the good old olfactory system. Hmm. There it is. Woo! Holy smokes. Chat is blowing up. What's up? Um... Oh, DC's hyping the other channel. Thanks, man. Yeah, I haven't put anything up recently, but I'm doing a world premiere of a brand new percussion concerto with an orchestra next month during the pandemic for, you know, somehow. So really excited about that. I'll be posting more about that in the next couple of weeks as I'm finishing learning the freaking piece. Gotta love world premieres. Um, let's see here. Who do I have to say hi to? Uh, Roy R. Does things. What's up? Good to see you. Trev, Trev, Peter White in the house. Um, awesome. Cheech is hanging out. And the legend himself, Jason, as well. What's up, man? Good to see you. All right. Again, we are on our first Booker's Pour of the night here. This is great. Um, not too heavy on the peanut notes. There's a really nice oak funk in this batch. A little bit of that, like, caramelized green apple note on here. Obviously, like, some nice rich caramels. Some cherry as well. Yeah, really balanced nose. I, I really like this nose a lot. It's not too overbearing in any direction. And as you all know, I'm not a big fan of overly peanut flavors in whiskey. So, you know, this one's doing well. I'm going to have another sip. Mm. Yeah, it's a really solid pour. Again, let me remind everybody what's in this glass here. This is number four. This is a really, really solid pour. Great balance. The finish isn't crazy long. It's not too spicy. Like the baking spices here are really, really integrated with like the dark fruit notes. So it's not blowing my palate out or anything. It's not eventful, but it's a really good batch of bookers. That's what I'm going to say about this first one. And it's going head to head now against number seven on this bracket. So let's see how this one compares. Oh, man. Check out the chat. Aiden says, uh, I live alone, so if I don't do the chores, nobody will. <laughs> don't tell Sarah. I do a lot of chores. <laughs> Cam, have you ever seen the video of Jason falling down? <laughs> yes, I've seen that video on a, on a couple of his live streams. Um, yeah, thankfully, nobody saw that happen to me after I was on Scott's channel a couple weeks ago. Not this past Tuesday, but a couple weeks ago. I knocked shit over. The symbol fell off the wall. It was not a good night. So I'm trying to avoid that and be really careful about how many live streams I do in any given week now. <laughs> Jesus. Shouldn't have put that on the screen. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you guys are talking about Jason's stream from last night. I didn't get to check that out. I'm so sorry, man. Last night was my one night this week to hang out with Sarah. So we had to watch The Bachelor last night. <laughs> All right, so let's do a little side-by-side -side on the nose. I like I like both of these batches a lot. Not, I can't remember if I held this up, but this is what's in my, my cup right now. The second part of this head-to-head. -head. All right, so... Let's check this out on the palate and come back to the nose. That one's definitely more aggressive on the baking spices, on the peanut notes. But a little bit of a better mouth feel. The finish, I can already tell, is going to be longer on this one. It's more intense. Um, the other one was a little bit more mellow, but... It's going to be a decision now between whether you want the intensity of the the one, even though I, I don't care for the flavors personally as much, 
um, or if you know I want that that really mellowed out profile, sacrifice a little mouth feel for that. Joe, what's up? Cheers to you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right. If I, if I let myself, I will go back and forth all night on these Booker's pours. So I'm going to try to move this along. <sighs> yeah. For me, four, um, while I said seven is more intense, more baking spice, more peanut, all that kind of good stuff, and a longer finish and a better mouthfeel, four has more of an oak presence in here, more of a just a depth to it. And again, that really helps balance it out from some of those younger notes those cask strength young notes that you get on these bookers. I haven't, oh, Daniel, what's up? Good to see you. Um, I haven't quite seen the trailer that was released today, but I saw the thumbnail and I was stoked to uh, check that out. I need to remind myself to do that after this stream. Um, the Maddie Gladden, I haven't tried this one yet or any of the, the products from them, but I saw them on the shelf in Indiana when I was there a couple weeks ago and I almost picked them up and I think I probably should have, to be honest. Oh, DC, what did you say? Oh, those new cards really pop and easy to read. Thanks, yeah. Um, I think this was Aiden's idea or someone's idea. And I ordered these black note cards and the gold ink really works well. So thank you guys. I was excited to get those. All right, back to back to number four, the first pour of the night. Yeah, without a doubt. I don't need to taste these again. All right, so just to remind you, this was four. And this is the one that I am choosing over number seven. All right. Great. So let me grab my bracket. Let me grab a pen just so I don't forget. Okay. So number four it is. So now we have to do number eight versus number two and figure out which one of those is my favorite. Excuse me. The bourbon belches are here. Actually, it's just because I ate right before the stream. All right. What do we got here? Yeah, Aiden, you mentioned black cards. That was definitely your idea. Thanks, man. The one you're choosing over number seven is one. Oh, no. <laughs> don't tell me that. Well, we'll see. If I remember last week, again, I don't know which one of these... God, now I'm now I'm scared. Maybe I should revisit that. I, I wrote it in pen, but let me revisit real quick, Trev, because now you're freaking me out, man. I like number four better, man. It's just the flavors for me. I'm I'm trying to be subjective on this blind as opposed to considering like the fact that someone else might like peanuts more than me or might like this more than me. I'm going purely by what I like on this one. Um, and I think it's important to note that. I don't think I've mentioned that so far on this uh, on this bracket. So, yeah, I'm gonna stick. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with my original choice, number four, for that very reason. Oh, Jen is in the house. What's up? Cheers to you. Good to see you. Okay, number eight and number two. Now we're gonna start with number eight. Yeah, if I remember last week, number nine, the winner of last week's bracket, I remember really digging it, but it was a tough choice between that one and number three. Both were really great. Um, so I'm excited to see what we end up with here versus number nine. So here is what is in number eight. Okay. And just, again, let me know if you need to see it again. Beautiful. Number eight. Oh, that smells good. That smells pretty good. Interesting. It's got a lot of fruit on this one. <laughs> Jen Ardolito's bourbon, hashtag bourbon babe. That's awesome. That's hilarious. I'm trying to get my bourbon babe to come in on these streams more often, but she's I, she's always getting home from the gym at this time. She always goes on Thursday nights, so she's probably in the shower right now. I think I have kitchen table in here, don't I? Let me check my... Yeah, I do. Put this back up. Um, and it's uh, never opened. It got it for sixty before the price jump. Interesting. Well, I'll I'll be curious to see where that falls in this bracket because I have never tried that one before this bracket. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. Sounds like you need a a beverage or three. <laughs> Numb that thumb right up. 
Okay, uh, number eight. Really nice fruity notes in here. When I'm when I'm getting these bookers that have these nice fruit characteristics, this one has even a little bit of lighter fruits in here. Like, I mean, maybe even like light cherry slash strawberry or, or maybe raspberry. Like a lighter berry note in here as well as like some darker things too. When I get these bookers in this blind flight, I'm really digging them um, because it's something different. It balances out the sharp baking spice, that nuttiness a little bit better. So let's check it out on the palate. Oh, that is like, oh my God. Oh my God, number eight. Holy crap. I don't know what that is, but that is incredible. It has everything. It has milk chocolate. It has peanuts, but it's it's only a little bit in there with the baking spice to add a sharp layer, a kick to it. It has a ton of rich, dark fruits. I mean, it has fruits all across the spectrum. That is an incredible pour of Booker's. The finish is going to last forever. It's like just now starting to move back and down. That is easily my favorite of the night so far. I obviously need to put it up against number seven if it wins this bracket. But but first, we have to put it up against number two. So, holy shit, number eight is incredible. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I want to peek so bad, but this is what is number eight. So, for what it's worth, amazing oak profile on this too, as it's continuing to, to develop. Yeah. The, all of these noses right now seem a little bit subdued, but I did leave these pores out for about 30 minutes uncovered, so maybe that's why. I'm not sure. Yeah, Cheech, I think so, too. I think that would be a lot of fun, man. Um, I saw that uh, Chad and Sarah did something with, with Fred and uh, Jacqueline, I believe is her name. They were they were hanging out. I saw that, and that was a cool idea. That's a different tier than I'm in, obviously. But it would be really cool to get a big couple's hang. Honestly, I should have done it for Valentine's Day, but it is never too late. I am belching a storm up here. I am so sorry. <laughs> Ooh, Aiden, what did you uh, what did you get there? Got something from Jason. I'm sure that's something good. <laughs> Alrighty, number two. This is what we have in number two. We are pitting this up against one of the most amazing bookers I've ever had. Just a second ago, number eight. So it's a little bit lighter on the nose here. There's um some barrel char. There's almost a tobacco note. Yeah, definitely a tobacco note in here. Um, yeah, just good caramels, tobacco barrel char, some oak. Uh, a little bit of light cherry in here, almost medicinal cherry for this one. I, I like this nose a lot. Um, it's not offensive, really, really well balanced, I would say. But it's going to have a hard time competing against number eight. Let's try this. Mm. really drying in the mouth really really nutty full of full of cinnamon and pepper spice that is more like the traditional Booker's profile that I know from the 2020 batches and again if you weren't here last week I've only really tried 2020 Booker's until this big flight battle so you know yeah that's great I mean that is a that's like a candy bar. That's like a Snickers bar all the way there. There is some good chocolate in there. There's some nice oak. Obviously, the peanut notes. Just a little bit of fruit comes through there, but not much. Nice long cinnamon finish, though. Yeah, it's like a, a cinnamon Snickers or something like that. Back to number eight. It makes number eight seem a little bit tame, although I know that it is It is not. So let me take a sip of water. Mmm. It's a good mind stick alike. <laughs> Trev says, count my Sarah N. Awesome. We should, we got to make it happen. You, Trev, and the ladies on a live stream. Yeah, we got to do it. It's going to happen. It's out in the universe now. Aiden says, local shop found a few, oh shit, 918s. 
I picked up what they had and offered to send Jason one for cost. Now I can't send anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, Jason reminded me of the nine uh, the nine eighteen on Tuesday night after Scott's last stream when we were hanging out after the show, like uh, still on Streamyard. And I pulled it out and tried it, and I totally forgot how good that batch was. Holy crap! Really, really good. Great minds think alike. <laughs> All right, back to number eight. Let me just confirm what I already think I know on this on this head to head. There's something. There's actually something in number eight here that's a little bit like, like that yeasty unbaked bread note. Yeah, it's it's a little bit. It's just different than any of the other bookers I've had, and that's combining with all of the other things I mentioned earlier. But totally a different beast here, and something that I really, really like. Oh my god, that is so good. Just reminding you that number eight is this, all right? And it is uh, defeating number two, <laughs> which is this. Okay, so we have that part of the bracket now figured out. I'm going to write this in. 43 in the chat, that is amazing. Um, we are approaching record numbers. I think 49 is my record. So if you're in the chat right now, drop a like on the video. That would help so much to get some more people in here tonight before we have Rock Up Review, before Bourbon Bites. Um, I moved back to 8 p.m. tonight. You know, 7.30 last week just didn't work. I checked the analytics, and it was a, it was a mess. Uh, and, and the graphic, the thumbnail for the video didn't work. I went with a little minimalist approach. So uh, learning as I go, but 8 p.m. is going to be it. I'm going to stick with this, and if I run into um, Ed's stream at 9 o'clock, it'll only be maximum 30 minutes, I hope. It just is what it is. There's so many channels now, and you just got to gotta pick it and stick with it. So I talked to a few people this week about that, and that's kind of the conclusion at this point. So, all righty. Uh, Keith in the house. What's up, man? B517s. Holy crap. I don't think I even have one of those. Um, yeah, I think the earliest I might have here is that C918, I believe. Yeah, I think I have the basically the last eight batches that have been released, including the A121. That's awesome. Um, how much do those cost? You want to? We could talk about that. <laughs> I'd love to get one. I don't know anything about those. Joe says, uh, "When's the concert happening?" Um, so I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The the one I'm I'm doing this world premiere, this new piece. That's going to be on March 21st. There is a live stream for that. It probably costs money. Um, it's with the New Albany Symphony Orchestra. So that is like my next gig, uh, which is crazy to have that in a pandemic. We're 15% capacity in the concert hall, which is 118 people. And the rest of those people have to tune in via live stream. But it's fine, and I'm going to get some good footage out of it, which is really nice. As far as a virtual concert on this channel, I don't know. It's definitely sometime in March is what I'm planning on. So... I want to make that happen. I think it would be a really fun evening. Um, you know, just something different. Yeah, you never see that here. Let's see what we got. What else? Well, Keith, that's a Dusty. <laughs> Man, I I got to find one of those batch 11s that you gave me, Jason. I don't want to spend 300 bucks for it, but I might. <laughs> I might take a paycheck. I, part of a paycheck. God, if my paycheck was 300 bucks, I would... I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> Alberta Rye. I'm actually, so this is a good segue really quickly before I do batch seven and eight versus head-to-head uh, -head right here. I'm going to be doing a second chance Sunday this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Not a scotch Sunday. This is another second chance Sunday. Three pours. Larceny A121. I'm going to give it a second chance. That's about it. Ezra 99, which I gave a pretty negative review to. But I want to give it another another shake, and then I'm going to do Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye on there because I liked it, but I wasn't totally sold on it in my review. But a lot of people are saying great things about it, and I want to check it out again. So this Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, I hope I'm not running up against some sort of sports something or other, but uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. So Sunday at 3. All right. Beautiful. Oh, Amy's in the house. Good to see you, Amy. And uh, Trev's still waiting on your samples. We're going to be doing that next Wednesday instead of Friday because of 
some logistics with Trev's travel uh, and things like that. So, and he doesn't have his samples yet. So next Wednesday is what we're going to be doing. <laughs> Go sports. I know, like, I don't watch sports at all, man. At at all. I'm like, a, I was a lacrosse player. God forbid. Nobody watches that shit. And I watch UFC. And then some college football. But this year just seemed weird. I didn't want to watch OSU this year because, I, I don't know. It just, it felt strange. Okay. Beautiful. So, seven, eight. Make sure I don't mix these up. I'm going to show you the note cards again. Just a reminder, we're now at the next step of tonight's bracket. This is number seven. And this was the incredible number eight. Let's see if uh, if number eight totally wins out here. I don't know. So seven is over here. Oh, man. Number eight. Number seven's a little bit a little bit lighter, more sugary sweet, a little bit like of that, that cane sugar, sugar in the raw note on seven, but, uh, but really just a good nose. Now, number eight, number eight has something darker and funkier to it. Like I said, there's that, that baked bread or unbaked bread element to it. This kind of weird yeasty thing going on. Tons of rich oak, dark flavors, just so balanced, so incredible, and nothing like I've ever had in a Booker's. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Oh, Rick, what's up? Good to see you, man. Cheers to you. Nick is here to ensure proper hydration. Thank you, Nick. Nice, nice. You got uh, one of the Ohio picks. Beautiful. JG was on the phone with your son. Haven't missed much, but this batch number eight this might be uh, an, an epic Booker's here. From the Blue Jackets. Oh, you know what? I don't follow the Blue Jackets religiously, but I love going to games. I mean, actually, hockey games and soccer and, and crew games in Columbus, those are the most fun sporting events to go to for me, uh, besides lacrosse, which I know is very niche. <laughs> Trev's flight's been stuck for five days now, says Amy. That sucks. Yeah, you... And that was FedEx. And FedEx usually here is killer. UPS took days getting me these um, these things from Sealbox after Sealbox shipped them three weeks later. But FedEx usually is on point here in Ohio. On point. Little voice crack. All right. Let me try number seven. Mm. That is like just a solid Booker's. Anything I would want in a Booker's and a great balance in there, that is number seven. Absolutely. And a great finish. I mean, they all pretty much have great finishes. They're so young and so so proofed up. <laughs> Wada. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, Sarah bought some uh, butter pecan ice cream the other day, some keto butter pecan ice cream. So I, I, had, to, I had to show her the old butter pecan. Holy shit, man. Number eight. I don't know what this is. If this is one of those famous old batches from 2015, like, um, what do I have? Mama's batch and big man small batch. It's probably one of those because I've never tasted anything like this from a Booker's. Easy. That's easy. Number eight. That is the winner. Oh, my God. I need to get a bottle of this. <clears throat> Whatever that is. Holy shit. Okay, so that settles it. It is going to be number eight versus number nine. Here we are. You can kind of see it. Uh, there we go. Number eight versus number nine in the middle of this bracket. And then the wild card that I have to pour is number five. And that could throw things off. Or if the wild card is Granny's batch, is going to be an easy decision. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, it is time for some water, isn't it? Tom says that uh, Blue Jackets games are a blast. Yeah, I. there's nothing better. Now, $12 beers, not great. Sneak a flask in if you can. I don't think, I, I don't think you even can because um, they have the metal detectors and stuff. So I don't know. But the expensive-ass alcohol at these games, that's always tough for me. <laughs> When you, when you have, like, and you all probably feel this way, when you have 20 to 200 bottles of whiskey at home, 
I don't want to pay for that whiskey when I go out. I am such a cheapo. I'll go and drink the cheapest, most disgusting thing when I'm out because, you know, you're going to come home and have the good stuff at at a fraction of the cost. You played rugby. Holy shit. That is some manly. <laughs> that is some some masculine energy. That is intense. I, I don't even know if I can hang with that. Lacrosse was was pretty rough. I've broken many, many bones in my body from that one. That's a great idea, Aiden. <laughs> I am here for that. <laughs> there we go, Nick. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, um, so I need to pour number nine from last week. So I have that one here. And this needs to go up against number eight from this week. So let me go ahead and let's do some logistics real quick. 46 people in here. Almost at a record. That's amazing. Please like the video. Give me 30 seconds. Got to move a few things around here um, to make some room on my little table in front of me that you guys can't see. Okay. So it's going to be eight versus nine. The winner of that will hit the wild card. Doing okay on time. Not great, but okay. So number eight is here. What card? This is five, and I need number nine. All right. Fresh glass. And now we are going to pour number nine. 47 people in here. That's amazing. All right. I'm excited about this. I, I never thought that Booker's could taste so good. And now I understand why people like Booker's, because all the stuff I've bought in 2020 was not up my alley. Just It just wasn't. Unless I'm eating ice cream with it. Vanilla ice cream and Booker's, that's beautiful. I like that a lot. Quarter season tickets. Uh, playoff games are on another level. The beers are insane, but I still buy them. Yeah, they are insane. But that's awesome that you have uh, some regular tickets for that. No way, Tom. You play defense. Very cool. Yeah, I was a face-off midfielder. So I was a Fogo. Um, well, towards the end of college, I was more of a uh, more – towards the end of high school into college, I was more of a Fogo. I was going to play college ball, um, but with a music degree, you can't fit that into your schedule at the, at the school that I went to. So um, I was kind of bummed because I wanted to play lacrosse in college, but it just didn't work out, unfortunately. I usually drink at home, but I've tried some pours in better establishments – Try, yeah, I do this too. There's a couple of really great bourbon bars here in Ohio, uh, Columbus area of Ohio, like two or three of them that have really reasonably priced things. So I will go in there and try before I buy if it's something that's, you know, over 100, 150 bucks and it's a reasonable price for the poor. So did I miss something up here? No, okay, we're good. Um, Tom says, did you play uh, lacrosse on the island? That's, yeah, right. New Yorkers definitely uh, got a lot of lacrosse going on. Okay, uh, finally opened up my Booker's Pig Skin last night. It was awesome to me. I, ha I I have that in here somewhere, but I don't know where it where it is. This is the flight I need to do now. I literally had one batch. It just wasn't my jam. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing for me, Trev. The Booker's are too freaking expensive at this point, and they're only going up. 85 bucks plus tax here in Ohio. I'm just not about it, man, unless I get one of the ones like I'm drinking right now at the end of this tournament, but I'm sure both of these are going to be older batches. I can only imagine. Thank you so much, Amy. You rock, you rock. I'm um, trying getting drilled to center ice. <laughs> I believe you, Peter. I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning the toughness of hockey. I mean, lacrosse is uh, pretty much there too, though. 51 in the chat, new record. Beautiful. That is amazing. Okay. Yeah, this is it right there. Get a knob store pick. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I, I don't understand. I don't understand the Booker's hype besides these older ones. All right, so um, let's remind all of you, last week, this was the winner of the four pours. This is number nine. If you hear me referencing number nine, that is this batch, okay? And now tonight's epic batch that has won is this one, number eight. And these... Whatever wins will go up against the wild card. So here we go. Let's let's nose number nine. Oh yeah, solid solid nose. I'll just do a quick side by side before I get into it. Man, 
This is going to be a tough one. Oh, this is going to be tough. Thanks, Cheech. Thanks, man. Oh, it looks like you've got a flight coming your way, Trev. A good, a good Booker's flight. That's awesome. Google uh, Nick says, "Googly eyes on. Focus the senses." Man, there's some beautiful like in this in this number nine. There's some amazing light fruit notes, like some green apple, and and honestly, this is weird. A little bit of pear. I gotta like move these up so I can get this on my schnoz. Yeah, it's just an amazing combination of light fruits and and dense caramel. It, it, it's it's just like you took a fruit cup and just drizzled it in caramel sauce. Damn, that is good. There is so much cherry on the palate. That is incredible. All right, I'm back. So much cherry on the palate. The light fruits on the nose, they don't transition as well to the palate. It is a little disjunct between the two, but both of them are really good in their own in their own right, you know? Oak, sweet tobacco. Yeah. Leather. That's a great pour. Damn. I can understand why that won last week. Again, cross shack is what's bad in lacrosse. Yeah, um, was playing lacrosse at age five. Yeah, so but, but I mean the cross check is illegal. So if it, not that that means people aren't doing it, <laughs> but yeah, cross checks are rough. Um, yeah, I've like broken hips, I've broken ribs, I've broken my hands and my fingers doing it. It's you know I got my my fingers smashed between two cross checks at the same time and I shattered them. So. That was not very fun. <laughs> ribs are just annoying, though, when you break those. Like, because you can't do anything for them to heal, and it just sucks when you're trying to breathe. <laughs> Aiden, yeah, it's like, I need to be doing some mushrooms or something when I wear these, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. There's a niche market in there somewhere. Scary Peeper, cheers, everybody. This looks like a fun lineup. Hey, good to see you. Probably first time in here. Um that I know of, at least in the chat, maybe you've been creeping or lurking a little bit here and there, but uh, cheers, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, let's go to number eight. Number eight has that, again, that weird funkiness on the nose as compared to number nine. Nine has those lighter notes, and yeah, there is some nuttiness in, in number nine on the nose that I didn't mention a second ago. But number eight, there's just added elements. Tons of brown sugar, actually, on number eight. I didn't call that out earlier. Really, really rich, like brown sugar, brown butter type notes. And that might go along with those bready characteristics I was getting as well. Yeah, just beautiful oak, rich caramel. Amazing. It's basically going to be a battle between light flavors and dark flavors here between these two. Hank Butts in the house. What's up? Cheers to you. 53 watching, says DC. Yeah, that is definitely the record. Go ahead and uh, hit that like button if you haven't already. Oh, God, this is a tough call. So for me, if I'm if I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going to make a comparison. This first one, number nine, which is a lighter profile right here. I just did that Larceny A121 video, and there's a, there's, a, there's a comparison here that I'm going to make. This is number eight, the darker profile. To me, number eight would be Larceny C920, which is darker, richer, more full-bodied. And number nine would be A120, which has lighter fruit notes, but maybe a little bit more balanced. On, in the case of Larceny, I gave it to that one, the more balanced, a little bit of, of a lighter one, which would be number nine here, last week's winner. 
But number eight, for me, I, I haven't quite tasted anything like this, and I might have to give the nod to number eight, even though number nine is so freaking good. And I'm going to be mad whichever way I go here because they're both. these are both incredible batches of bookers, without a doubt. Plus, we could kick in lacrosse. Gonna, the, geez, can't do that these days. <laughs> yeah, sneezing with busted ribs is not a great, not a great thing. You're absolutely right about that. I'm so new in the whiskey community. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know Peeper. I don't know Scary Peeper. So I, I feel like a total newbie right now. I'm so sorry. Is this which one I prefer? Because if that's the case, Elijah Craig any day of the freaking week, especially the Barrel Proof Expressions, that. The larcenies are just entirely too disappointing for me. And I know people have been getting pissed at me for that and doing a negative. People don't like when you do negative reviews of anything because they want you to say something positive about everything. The Larson A121 was not good, <laughs> plain and simple, especially compared to the other batches, which I also don't care for. But at least they had some more presence and, you know, I don't want to get into it. I'm going to, again, I'm re-reviewing that on Sunday at 3 p.m. So be there or B square. <laughs> okay, I gotta make a call. Eight is so funky. It's so funky, but it's so good. Yeah, Aiden, you're totally right. You're totally right. And I try to like put a lot of disclaimers and caveats on my videos when I make them, but you can't catch them all, you know? And so at, at some point you say something bad, you don't disclaimer it up front and then people get pissed. And it's like, I, I can only do so much. When I record these videos, I don't script them out. I have like five bullet points and I just riff on it and then I edit the video and that's it, <laughs> you know? Um, and if you get lost in thinking about it or lost in the editing, you'll never put a video out. So you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, live and let live. Yeah, bourbon buddies came out of the lurking. <laughs> Absolutely. Daniel Kerber in the house. What's up? Good to see you. I have a store pick in my basement right now that I haven't cracked. I was considering giving a, uh, doing a giveaway for it or cracking it. I'm not sure which yet. So to know that they're good makes me want to crack it, but it also makes me want to give it away if someone else will actually enjoy it. <laughs> There's almost a perfume note in this one, in number nine. That lighter one I mentioned, that kind of that apple or pear type notes. There's almost a perfume note in there. All right, I'm going to stick with my gut here. I'm going to say that number eight gets the nod. So my winner of this eight-part Booker's Bracket with the wild card left to go is number eight. And that, again, for those of you just tuning in, all 55 of you is this pour. This is the winner tonight. And now it has to face the wild card, which is number five. This will either be a really hard decision or a really easy one. And this is what number five is. And I'm going to pour it right now and see which one is better between number eight and number five. Let me find this. Move a few things around. I have glasses of whiskey surrounding me right now. So, <laughs> and I need more glasses. I'll have to turn around and grab some in a second. All right. So five versus eight. And I need a little bit more eight in my glass. All right. Let's see. Check out the chat. Oh, my God. ADHD whiskey in the house. You caught me at a bad time. You caught me with my pants down. I was just making pours and things. Um, good to see you, man. And uh, I don't know if we're totally on yet. I, I, I'm not going to formally announce it now, but I will hint at the fact that I have a possible live stream with Matt coming up in early March. You know that he does his things on Fridays, so you can kind of narrow that down. Early March. And uh, I know we're going to solidify that soon, but I'm excited. I'm excited to be on with the world's top whiskey taster. And one of the, one of the people, along with Jason and several others, who I have uh, looked up to here on Whiskey Tube as I've gotten my start with this channel. So, freaking awesome. Uh, negative reviews mean honesty. You got to call it as it is. Yeah, I think so too. And I think like I think 
at the end of the day, people are going to appreciate a negative, honest review more than a contrived BS review, you know? So let's see. I'm not used to so many things in the chat, which is hilarious because there's not that much, but I am so bad at keeping up. And there's 59 in here, so holy crap, that's amazing. All right, I'm going to just kind of get down here. All right. Um, bourbon Buddy says, oh, snap, time to get serious. I Maybe that means that the two bourbons that are up against each other tonight are, or the two bookers here at the end, the wild card, maybe that means that it's a good wild card. I don't know. All right. So I've already smelled and tasted number eight twice tonight to get it to where it is on the bracket. This is the final battle, the final boss right here. Bowser or whatever, whatever video game you want. Frieza, Dragon Ball Z. Here is number five, the wild card. Again, just a reminder, this one is sneaking in here to try to dethrone number eight. Let's do it. Oh shit, that's good. I think, yeah. Really, really high, high alcohol, high proof hitting me right here. But this is the first time I've poured it out of the sample bottle. So let me whip it around and get some air into this glass. The others have been sitting out a little bit longer. I'll check the chat while I do this. Roscoe Pico Train says, cheers, everybody. Cheers to you as well. <laughs> I do not love old tub. It tastes like an old tub. But Wigmaster, that is okay to each their own. I just can't do the peanuts, you know. But for the price and what it is, it's actually a great value, um, being unfiltered and everything. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Keith, we have one open at work, and the guys I work with all tried it. Nobody liked it. It's not the price. I just think it tastes awful. I don't know what you guys are talking about necessarily. So... All right. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to taste it first. Oh, my God, that's amazing. I think Sarah did a great job arranging this flight, or this bracket, rather. Oh, that might be better than number eight. Oh, crap. It's definitely not as, like, funky and dark as number eight. But it is so intense and rich. It like hits your palate and just explodes. Oh my god, that is phenomenal. It almost reminds me of an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This this wild card pour, number five. Amazing. Daniel says, uh, best video game character for this battle should be Booker DeWitt. Carl says, we really love our first bottle of Ulta, but the replacement we just bought isn't nearly as good. That's that's interesting. I don't know how the batching goes with all that. So, yeah, so cool to see so many uh, familiar faces and new people and whiskey tubers in the house. Really, really incredible. Especially uh, the old WTWT. The WT squared. Matt Porter. Oh, my gosh. Number five, the wild card might dethrone this. Let, let me, hey, Sarah. Hey, did you arrange this Booker's flight intentionally? So like the wild card pour that you put in here, you weren't thinking like, hey, I'm going to make sure this is a really, because I said like the older batches are probably better. Absolutely no thought. Right? No thought. No. Oh. Okay. I was mad at you when I was doing it. Okay. Okay. All right. She was mad at me when she was arranging this flight, so I got to put on my sensory deprivation glasses and, and get into the nose here. Damn. There's almost like, you guys know like aspartame and like diet, uh, diet things, you know, fake sugar. Number eight, which I really loved earlier with the, all those dark characteristics and that funkiness, almost has an aspartame note in here. Almost something fake sugar. But, oh, man. But the palate's so good. And so dark and rich. Okay. Okay. 
All right, now to number five, the contender. Let me take a sip of water. I'm going to cop out and say this is a tie. I probably will do that. Oh, my God. All right. This is intense. This is an intense battle. Check the chat. Sorry, y'all. From Bioshock Infinite. I've never played that. I, I haven't played a lot of video games in the last five or so years, unfortunately. Lido says, uh, that Dusty you sent me is quite delicious. Which one did I send you? Let me, th um, let me think about this. Oh, the Johnny Walker Black Label from 82. That is ridiculous. That is a ridiculous pour. Yeah, I, I, um, I've shared it with you and one other person, and I probably won't be giving any more of it out because it is so freaking good. It, it, like, that's Johnny Walker, and it tastes like sp some sort of spring bank funk combined with incredible sherry casks, well over 12 years old. It's just, it's quality all around. That's an, an amazing pour. Oh, yeah. See, see, I don't, those are notes I don't like, and the peanuts I don't like as well. So, let's see. Okay. I think I'm all caught up here. I think I'm all caught up. Sherry G is in the house. Good to see you. Awesome. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to... Oh, Jesus. I'm going to give number eight the nod very slightly. I'm going to basically call this a tie. I'm so sorry. I'm going to give number eight a 10% nod on uniqueness. Yeah, on uniqueness. Something I was just not expecting with this entire lineup. Number eight has it. But number five, the balance, the proof, the intensity is higher on all of those. But it's just more a little bit more traditional, a little more Elijah Craig barrel proof esque for me. So I'm gonna reveal I'm gonna reveal all of this right now. So I'm sorry to the chat. Uh, I need to get this off the screen here. So let me. There we go. So number eight, I said, is my winner by just a slim margin of this entire bracket, and it is Mama's batch from 2015, batch number five. I'll take that. That is so unique. That is. That's great. Now, number five, big man, small bash. Holy shit. So the rumor is true that these older batches are absolutely incredible. Mama's was just a little bit darker and funkier and weirder. And big man, small batch, Daniel, that's your pour. That was so intense and so balanced. It was like, it was everything I wanted in a whiskey, but... And I said it was a tie, and the other one took 10% of a lead based on uniqueness. Those were incredible. Now, let me go back through the bracket here. So the one that Mama's Batch beat out. Mama's Batch beat out Sip a While. That's interesting. And that was a pretty clear choice for me. But Sip a While, I, I know Sip a While was good as compared to, and this is the one that Trev, I believe Trev, you said that this is the one you did not like. And that turned you off from Booker's. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, let me let me see here. Sip a While defeated number seven. Number seven was Beaten Biscuits. So... I thought that was a, a decently easy choice for me. <clears throat> okay. And then number two was... Yeah, Boston Batch. This was I think this was an easy choice. It was number eight, which was Mama's versus Boston. Mama's just mauled Boston's Batch. And then it definitely beat Sip a While. And then 
narrowly edged out big man small batch. This is crazy for me to reveal all of this. <laughs> all right. And then last week, I don't need to go through last week, but I do want to know what number nine was, which was the winner of that of last week's bracket. Number nine was Kitchen Table. So the ones that stood out to me, all, all of these were older bookers, basically from 2015, 2017, and 2018. Um, that makes it clear that I'm going to stop buying bookers now. <laughs> Shit. No more wasting my money on bookers. Okay. Let's see what we've got here in the chat. <laughs> the good old reveal. Um, let's see. JG says, pick one. <laughs> I've narrowly picked Mama's Batch. Honestly, the one I would prefer to sip every day would be Big Man Small Batch. Mama's Batch was just a slight bit more unique. And maybe I shouldn't have gone by. Maybe I should have went by like real everyday standards. Yeah, Daniel, I'm sorry. It, like I said just now, though, it, I would sip it on an everyday basis as opposed to being more of a mood pour. <laughs> Your stomach was legit in knots. That's funny. Okay. Beautiful. Well, the Booker's, the Booker's Bash is done. It's going to be hard to keep track of where all these glasses go here. Hang on. Okay, next up. Next up this evening, I'll try to do these very quickly. I know it's already 9 p.m. I know Ed's on at Rod Cut. I'm so sorry. If you want to hang around, that's amazing. If you want to bail, I totally understand. But I am going to keep going with the live stream. Not going to cut this thing short. We're going to do two quick blind pours. For my beautiful fiance, Sarah, if you're watching, Sarah, I love you so much, but you're so tricky. Here we go, number one, and number two, in the old black Glen Cairns. Okay, um, let's see. Guess I've got a good one still. On the other hand, uh, what are you, uh, Aiden? What are you talking about? Remind me. Sorry, man. 27% battery, let it burn. <laughs> Hendo in the house, what's up, man? Hey, that was a fun time on Tuesday. The after show was very fun. <laughs> Is Jim Beam putting out crappier whiskey, making bad decisions, Jack up the price on the new inferior bookers and getting rid of the older? I mean, look, it's it's just business probably at this point. Um, giving away 15-year single barrel, nearly cast strength bourbon on their store picks honestly is not a smart business decision. And and if they were charging me 80 bucks and that was a regular release on the shelf, like a, a 15 year single barrel, 120 proof, and it was widely distributed instead of only being store picks because like in Ohio, we can't get a 15 year store pick. I'd pay 80 bucks for that because of what it is. And I like those a lot. Um, but like, obviously a, a good business decision is to, you know, more whiskey, um, so dilute it a little bit more, put it into the 15 year small batch release, um, make, what would that be like six fifths more profit when you go to from 120 proof to 100 proof. So whatever, but yeah, I mean, the Booker's shit is not, not hanging at, not, not doing well for me, unfortunately. Oh, kitchen table, then Booker's in general. Um, and what did you say about kitchen table? You said it got a good one still. I liked Kitchen Table, though. But, I mean, compared to these older batches, not great. Or not that it's not great. It's just not enough to, to knock them out, you know? Uh, I have not had any little books ever for whatever reason. I mean, it's just a lot of money for me. Like 120, 140, 150 usually if I'm going to try to get it secondary because I'll never wait in line for one of those. I don't know. I've never had any of them. They're probably pretty good, but... Judging by the Booker's turnout this year, little book to me, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and this is my case too. I have three 15-year store picks over there. I just got a new one. Two of the three are like lights out, and then one of them is just a really good bourbon. You can't complain with – you can't complain when like the worst of the three, and they're like $55, $60 bottles – the worst of the three is just a damn good bourbon. That's a pretty good place to be on the low end of the spectrum. 
Ooh, Alpha Store tacos. That sounds like some good stuff. Yeah, give your palate a little break between that, huh? There's a whistle pig in Alberta discussion going on, and I I haven't really had a lot of whistle pig, unfortunately. Again, it's like the McAllen of rye whiskeys. I don't want to shell that out. I just don't. Okay, blind pour number one. We have two blind pours. I'll try to do them real quick. Here's number one. Oh, God, I'm smelling peat. The peat is the peat is wafting up. Holy shit, that is very strong. Give me one second. Hey, Sarah. Did you choose from any sample bottles? Okay, thank you. I have Octomores from Carl and Uta that they sent me um, from last Sunday. And I was worried that this was an Octomore. And I don't, I'm so unfamiliar with those, their samples, that who knows. What the f... What is this crap? This smells like broth. This smells like beef broth. Oh my god, what the... Ugh. What did she put in this glass? This smells like beef broth. Mm. What the f <coughs> I think that's soy sauce. I think that's soy sauce. <coughs> Did she put soy sauce in a glass? What the f <laughs> What is that? <coughs> that is so salty. Is that... She put a peated whiskey and soy sauce. <laughs> I love soy sauce, but I wasn't ready for that. What the hell? <laughs> I guess I need to call if it's low sodium or normal. <laughs> she, she did say she was mad at me. <laughs> I thought beef broth when I smelled it, but it is soy. This is some soy sauce. Okay, I gotta figure out. So I have a couple peated whiskeys over there. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure out which one this is. What? It tastes like she mis mixed peated whiskey with something. <clears throat> this is horrible. What the fuck is happening? I'm sorry for my language. It's a little bit campfirey. I'm gonna say that's Lagavulin 16. I'm not even gonna go through the rest of this. This is a very quick blind flight. I think that's Lagavulin 16, but it might have something else in it that's tainting it. And that's soy sauce. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna go yell at my fiance. G give me one second, I'm so sorry. Did you give me soy sauce? Did you put soy sauce in that glass? <laughs> I'm not even looking at the cards. Is it log of one sixteen? Yeah. Did you mix it with something? No. Okay, okay. You gave me soy sauce. What the hell? All right. So you probably heard that. She gave me soy sauce. <laughs> What? Oh. She put soy sauce in my black Glencairn. What the fuck? What is happening? All right, number one, she said is not Lagavul in 16. Okay, then my next guess on this and my final guess, I'm not going to spend all night on this, Lefroy PX cask. It's got a little bit of, I could have mistaken the campfire note for being a little bit less medicinal because there's fruit in it because of the PX finish. Nope, it is Ardbeg 10, so I I suck ass. But at least I got the soy sauce. Okay, well, I'm going to have to rinse that glass out. Oh, my God, I'm just, I'm tasting just... I, uh, not great, not great. She was mad at me earlier, too, so, yeah. 
I'm sorry, I'm gonna check the chat check the chat now. <laughs> that sounds gross. Yeah, it was freaking gross. Um <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this a regular thing. I had one little sip. Popping bottles here. Bottles of water. Good God. Did you put soy sauce? <laughs> exactly. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, I broke ke I broke the old keto diet the other day. I'm basically breaking it once every two to five weeks for sushi. So she knows I love sushi, but I don't like soy sauce that much. Exactly. At least I got it right. <laughs> I honestly don't know. And yes, I might have to destroy that Glenn. <laughs> I need to post a video of me just smashing it with a hammer. <laughs> with the soy sauce bottle just like off right to the side, you know. Okay, so I'm going to take this graphic down. I've realized I have this up and I don't need it. So that graphic is now now gone. Okay, let's wrap this live stream up. I know it's 9.15. Again, I know Ed's going and, and Clifton's going on at 10. I apologize. Let me grab two cups from right back here on my uh, cup shelf. And we're going to pop these new these new bottles. And I'll tell you what uh, what the neck pours are doing, you know, for what that's worth. <clears throat> All righty, let's do this. Thank you all so much for hanging out tonight. We have 54 likes and 52 viewers. That's a great ratio. But if you are a viewer and you haven't liked it, just like the video. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Nick says, frame that card and put it on the wall. Where is that comment? <laughs> yeah, I need to frame that soy sauce card. That's hilarious. Soy sauce may work with Little Book 4. Oh, that makes me not want Little Book 4. <laughs> Smash it with a bottle of soy sauce. Hilarious. Bourbon Baller just subbed. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Did the soy sauce ruin your palate? I don't think it's going to ruin my palate. I'm going to have a little uh, extra sip of water here. And let me take another sip of one of these Booker's batches and try to reacclimate myself. Uh, you know, one thing Fred Minnick says is he uses like high fat cheese, like, like Munster cheese in particular. I actually tried Munster cheese, and I've, I just had Ardbeg, too, so I got a little peat in my mouth. I tried Munster cheese between pours. It actually does a really great job of coating your palate because of all that fat uh, in the cheese, and it's great. I really like doing that, and I, I think he uses some sort of, like, crackers as well, so. <laughs> yeah, Amy, I'm trying to be respectful of everybody, but thank you so much for, for calling that out. Yeah, um, Ed at Rocka is going is is live tonight. He's live right now. So when we get finished here, jump on over there and then jump on over to uh, Clifton at Bourbon Bites. He's checking out the new Heaven Hill A121 releases, Larceny and Elijah Craig. Whew. Beautiful. Yeah, Whiskey Tube is solid AF. I'm feeling really blessed and honored to uh, be hanging out with all of you tonight and having 49 in the chat still. That's amazing. Okay. Here we go. Two fresh glasses. Let's start, let's start here. Try not to knock the drum over. Pursuit United. Honestly, I've never really listened to the podcast, if I'm being, if I'm being real with you guys. Um, only so many hours in the day. But I do need to get more into the bourbon podcast realm of things. And uh, I believe I watched part of Jason's review on this particular whiskey. So I'm curious to see how this does. I think Jason said it was pretty good, if I remember. But if I can get it open, my God. Okay, hang on a second. Technical difficulties. I'm trying not to knock the googly eyes off of the, the bottle. You know? There we go. Beautiful. So, uh, Pursuit United, 108 proof, 54% ABV. It is a blend of high rye and weeded bourbons. All right. And that's all I know. I can smell the rye in there and the residual soy sauce in my in my nose. Alrighty, so Pursuit United, 
I was very excited to try this. Um, I think it was 65 bucks from Sealbox. And I think this Chattanooga apple or uh, apricot brandy barrel finished whiskey, I believe this was 70 bucks. So I am a shameless fan of Chattanooga and what they do. And I love brandy finished whiskeys. So let's see what this is like. Mm, it doesn't smell great. I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but it smells very weird. It smells like Woodenville, which I do not like. All right. Let's see what we got here. Best community. Yeah, it absolutely is. Kevin Campbell, cheers to you. Good to see you here. Uh, scare people. Uh, missing chats for random reasons. Don't need to apologize. No one owns whiskey too. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's enough to go around for everybody, I think. There enough people like bourbon and whiskey in this world <laughs> for whiskey too to be good. And uh, for enough people to tune into all the live streams. I Whiskey She Wines, amazing to see you here. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers, bitches. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Lito says, loving the growth of the channel. Me too. Yeah, and I've got to get some more videos out this week. Um, Elijah Craig A121 will be tomorrow or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. I also have a benchmark vertical that I'm uh, episode that I need to edit. It's a long episode. I'm trying to cut it down to be under 25 minutes because it's a full vertical of the benchmark line, but that's going to be coming out very soon as well. That's what we have coming up. Oh, C920. Hell yeah. Elijah Craig. <clears throat> Good stuff. Okay. I need another sip of water. Actually, let me, let me do a little Mama's batch. Dude, Mama's batch is crazy good. Again, it's that funkiness, that dark funkiness. All right. Let's get into the Pursuit United now. <clears throat> um, Canadian whiskey, Great Plains, 17 years plus one full year. That sounds great. That sounds really good. I'm not a big Canadian whiskey fan, but I admittedly have not had enough of it. So maybe I'm not a great judge. All right, Pursuit United again, 54%, a high rye and weeded blend of mash bills. Mm, get a little bit of that um, that sharp mintiness, like spearmint and green apple. But it's not overwhelmingly in your face, you know. It's really balanced out with some just nice caramel notes, nice vanilla notes. Not a lot of oak to speak of. Again, this is a neck pour. It's a lighter profile, but really tasty smelling profile. Cheers. Mm. So I smelled the... Ooh, that's weird. It's so distinct in this blend. You can smell the high rye on the nose, and then you go to the palate, and you immediately... If you've ever had... Like, if you've ever had a really young weeded whiskey, or... Yeah, if you've ever had a young weeded whiskey, let's just say... The wheat really kind of softens it up, but but it gets out of the way, and you get all the corn sweetness, all that corn grain sweetness. On the nose, I got the high rye content, spearmint, green apple. On the palate was all of that wheat and corn sweetness. That's so interesting. It was honestly a little disjunct between the two, but that, you know, interesting. Just cracked uh, A121. I'll be curious to know your thoughts on that. I love all the ECBP stuff. A121, just like Larceny, is underwhelming to me for right now. Um, Trevor says, uh, I literally had benchmark. I really like it. Excited to get. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get out of Indianapolis any t or Indiana anytime soon. And not a lot of them are worth worth it, but it is definitely an interesting lineup. Very, very interesting. The McKinsey in the blend bourbon suit uh, is legit juice. You'll have to elaborate. I'm a newbie. I don't know what that means. This is um I mean look, this is like a this is a solid this is a solid dr bourbon. Is it worth sixty five bucks? I don't know. At least right now, again, this is total bottle crack, neck pour, cork pop, all that stuff. 
I don't know if it's worth 65 bucks. At 40 bucks, I would really like this a lot. It, it might get better, but also you know the people that you're supporting because if you listen, I believe it's a podcast, right? Like if you listen or if you know these people and you know their personalities, you want to support them, this is a freaking awesome way to do it. But I, I'm, I'm not thinking about that right now. I just want to think about the merits of the whiskey. <clears throat> Hank, I am tasting the uh, bourbon, uh, sorry, the Pursuit United release. McKenzie is from, uh, it's from the Finger Lakes. The distillation, okay. I've never had any of their stuff. That's interesting. Is that the weeded or the rye portion of the mash bill? Do you know? Mm. That second sip was better, more integrated between the rye mash bill and the weeded mash bill. Yeah. Okay, it's the weeded portion from Finger Lakes. Okay. Um, Kevin, I... Uh, where was that at? Kevin, I chose... It was basically a tie between Big Man Small Batch and Mama's Batch, both from 2015. I gave the slight nod to Mama's Batch because it was a little bit more unique. I said 10% of a nod to that. And the and Big Man Small Batch was a better overall pour, a better everyday, just a solid bourbon from start to finish. So, yeah. Okay. And there's actually here on the back end of this um, Pursuit United, there's a solid amount of oak which is impressive um, because I'm assuming these aren't heavily aged, you know, blends going into here. So yeah, that's great. And it actually has a, an element of the Chattanooga stuff, that sort of grainy or OD or brand type characteristic. The Pursuit United has a little bit of that going on, which, which I like it's, it's again, it, feels younger, but that's okay because of the way that it's presented. Um, uh, McKinsey bottle in the bottom, really impressed with it. You know, the one thing I'll say about weeded mash bills is I don't really like weeded mash bills unless they're blended in with something or they're just old enough. It's clear now that Larceny, Larceny Barrel Proof, even the maker stuff for me, I'm not a maker's fan. Anything that doesn't have enough age in a weeded mash bill, it just tastes young and cheap to me. I hate to be that way. The Weller stuff is the same. I Antique is fine. A lot of people love it because they can't get it. I can get it here in Ohio. It's just fine. The Foolproof, I have a shitty store pick. The Weller 12, after 2014, became uneventful. William LaRue was incredible. But like weeded mash bills just need time. And they need lower entry proof. And we need to tell Heaven Hill that for the larceny shit. Sorry, I'm pontificating at this point. I've lost viewers. I've lost like six viewers in my last 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay. F secondary markets, yes and no. All right, final pour of the night is this one right here. This is the Chattanooga Whiskey, batch 17 from their experimental single batch, single batch series. Let's be clear. Apricot brandy barrel finished. So the batch size, this is a three barrel batch, very small batch. I'm assuming that would yield probably around, what would that be, like a thousand bottles basically? Um, finished in Turkish apricot brandy barrels. That's pretty much all we get. It is 102 proof, 51% ABV. The nose smelled right off the neck here like Woodenville, pot stilled, 90 proof. I don't like Woodenville at all. Let's see if this gets better. The mash bill here is unique. It's not on the bottle. It has some sort of oats involved or something, but we'll see. Damn it. Yeah, it's got that. Woodenville, Nick, you're in here right now, I think. My buddy Nick here in Ohio. Woodenville has this like Sasquatch in the middle of the Pacific Northwest forest, damp, watery funk in it that I don't like. It's almost a little bit rubbery in a way. So I, this nose is really weird. 
there is some sweetness and and you can smell the apricot in here but that prevailing it's it literally smells like woodenville if you guys know that maybe i need to get with the times and i just need to like woodenville but i don't like it mm mm whoa that almost got juicy and like candy sweet like to the extreme it tastes like i'm chewing on a peach candy or apricot candy ah okay it was experimental i'll say that it has a liqueur note into in it the sweetness of a liqueur present in the front to mid palate Gets into the back palate here. It's all it's it's all pepper spice in the back of the throat and just kind of gross, sticky sweetness in the front palate and in, in your mouth, basically. Ah, damn it. Not a winner. I love Chattanooga, but this is not it. This is this is not it. Dang. Well, I'm, I'm sad. I love brandy finished bourbon, and I have a lot of faith in Chattanooga, but this just isn't it. So that sucks. Has anybody had this? Apricot brandy, Chattanooga? If you have, let me know. I'm, I'm pretty bummed out here. Lito agrees with uh, the weeders. Yeah, you got to have some age on them. High rye or straight up right. Yeah, me too. Unless you get age on them. If you get age on them, the weeders get amazing. I'd like to get one to go down a bottle and see the progression if I like it more. I can't get it here. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, remind me. I, I, I actually, the last time I was on a live stream, the last couple times, and we've talked about antique, I don't think I've been out of my house. That's not a joke. I haven't even gone to the grocery store. Sarah's been ordering Instacart, so <laughs> I haven't been out to find one, but I, I'll get you an antique. Dude, I promise you. I promise you I will get you an antique. Lito said, uh, it smells like Bigfoot's dick. It does. It really does. It's not good. Um, yeah, I think this is entirely subjective. I don't like the smell and taste of Woodenville, but I know so many people do. It's just, there's something in there to me that is so rubbery and off-putting and funky that I just can't get into. Oh my God, someone in Washington sells 107 for $399. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is... Ugh. Lido gets hit with a little funk on chatties, but I, I like, no, look, the other Chattanooga stuff, I have the Rye 99, I have the Cask 111. This, this doesn't even resemble them. This is not it. I'm bummed that this was 70 bucks, if I'm being honest. And you know, when you go back and you look at the releases of their experimental distillery, this is uh, release 17. All of the other ones have been like underproof liqueur or coffee infused or this or that. And so I looked at this one going, maybe this is going to be different because I don't want low proof. I don't want something infused with something that it's going to be too influenced, too sweet. This is basically that just at a higher proof, unfortunately. Yeah. Sad trombone. There we go. <laughs> Under counter. Yeah, but usually it covers it pretty well, to be honest with you. Yeah, that makes sense. I've heard those taxes are crazy up there. <laughs> I'll send you a sample of this if you want. I have no problem giving this away now. So are you more disappointed by this or the Yellowstone? Uh, the Yellowstone easily because the Yellowstone masquerades as a $100 bottle. This on seal box was 70 and seal box overcharges by usually about 10 bucks. So I would assume that this is probably a sixty or fifty-five dollar bottle. The Yellowstone by a by a long shot because it just tasted like a decent Jim Beam product, and people are like, "Oh, I really liked it. It had a little, it had some fruit influence." No, look, if you're paying a hundred bucks for bourbon, think about what else is MSRP at one hundred bucks. That Yellowstone shit, even if the nineteen eighteen seventeen releases were amazing, twenty twenty sucked. It was peanuts. It was like LaCroix burped into your bottle and gave a little bit of fruit in there. And that's it. it. It was... So, anyways. Yellowstone 2020 was more disappointing. This is just like... 
it's labeled experimental. So that's on you if you buy this and you don't like it because they're telling you this was an experiment, you know? Yeah. Thanks, Richie. Yeah, I. it's the only way I can be, you know? So do not buy this. I will send you a sample. I'll send you a two-ounce sample free of charge. Just let me know if you want it. It's It's not it. Holy crap, 29%. That is crazy. Trade my always for, yeah, that's, that's bait. Like I'll always keep an antique on my shelf and that's it. I will never have a backup bottle of it. Okay. All right, everybody. 41 in the chat. Thank you all for sticking around. We have 61 likes. It's been a really successful stream in my book. Big man, small batch, mama's batch. It's clear that the old bookers are the bookers. Those are the ones to go to. Sarah put freaking soy sauce in my blind flight. That sucks. Um, and Ardbeg. Just, you know, not great all the way around. And I, I love Ardbeg, but not next to soy sauce. Pursuit United. Pretty freaking decent. I'm, I'm into it. At 65, it's a little steep, but I like the pour. Even though you can really separate the two mash bills in there. Two plus mash bills. I don't know how many there are, but I'm assuming it's two. Weeded and, and rye. And then this Chattanooga, it's just, it's just not it. So it's Woodenville with some apricot candy in the mid palate. So, all right. I think that's it. Fish sauce next weekend. Blind. Let's hope not. Let's hope there's no fish oil in my blind flight. Thank you, Richie. Everybody go check out Ed at Rock Cut if you're hanging out tonight. Sarah soy sauce was epic. Yes, it was, DC. All right, guys. Cheers to you. I'm going to end my uh, night with Big Man Small Batch, courtesy of Daniel in the chat. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, I will see you next week. Just to let you know, next week will be my last live stream for a while. The first week of March. Sorry, what day is it right now? The 18th. I have a live next week on Thursday. The next week after, I am taking a week off. Okay, I'm just letting you know I have a uh, orchestra rehearsal that night, and I won't be able to do a live stream on that Thursday night. I'll be home at like midnight. So next uh, two Thursdays from now, there will be no live stream, forewarning you. But this Sunday is a second chance Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. So tune in for that. Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye, Larceny A121 Barrel Proof, and Ezra Brooks 99 Proof. That is this Sunday. So that's what we have coming up. Next week, Wednesday, before Jason Mash and Drum, blind, fight, blind Flight with Trev Wilson. That is all. Cheers to all of you, and I will see you next time.